Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to do a two filter overhaul in Luminar AI. There's so much fun, so much power, so much cool stuff. Now, here's the photo. Uh, this is Lake Louise in uh, Banff, Canada. It's a beautiful landscape. I showed up into the day hoping for sunset. Didn't get one as you probably saw from the thumbnail. I'm putting a new sky in, but the first thing I wanna do is because it's fairly dark, if I put the new sky in, it's kinda of harder to see. So I don't wanna put it in first. I'm first gonna to go to Accent AI, and I'm just gonna brighten the photo a little bit. Now, I'm gonna do something about like that. You know, actually I might pull that back a little bit. I just wanna get a better visibility into the photo. Accent AI is great for that. That is one of the best filters like anywhere in any app, I'm just sold on the thing and have been since it came out. It's fantastic because I just went from that photo to that photo. But what I want to do is make a sunset. Now, this is an art piece. This is not reality. Um, you know, you can agree or disagree as to whether it's okay to use a new sky. I think it's fine. I'm just creating something I want to create. I'm not going to try to pretend like I actually saw this. So I'm going to go get a new sky. I'm going to get a sunset, and I'm going to get this one. This is in my friend Matt's uh, sky pack. I'll put a link to that down below. This desert sunset collection is fabulous. It's got a lot of great skies in it, and this is a lot more like what I had hoped to see while I was there. However, things are not really quite set the way I want them to be. So I'm going to go in and start with shift the horizon position, and this is how I'm generally starting when I start my edits with a new sky. I make some adjustments to the horizon position, and then I come up here to the vertical position, and I adjust that accordingly, and you will notice the reflection adjusting. Uh, they're basically moving as uh, mirrored copies, so in opposite opposite direction. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit as well. Maybe something about like that. And let me show you. This is what I talked about in that video, just how good the AI has gotten. So if you look here, I zoom in a little bit and just look at that masking. I mean, all along these little edges, it just looks great. I mean, that sky just went in perfectly. And that is not the kind of thing that you can mask in very easily uh, in the old uh, ways, right? So prior to this tool, you had to do that with a masking brush here in Luminar. It wasn't easy. But also, the reflections have gotten so much better, and you have this great control. So if I turn this off, if you look at the mountain here, it's kind of blue. It's, it's basically blue hour post-sunset, and so it's got a bluish tint. Um, and same down here, but if you look at the reflection, you know, you're getting a little bit more of that scenery lighting on the mountain where the snow is as well as the reflection, but also that reflection has gone in so well. And I think that relighting and that reflection adjustment, they're just looking good, my friends. This stuff is really, really cool. Now, I'm going to take the relight strength. I'm going to bump that up because I want to go higher and I want to create a little bit more intensity there. So something about like that. And this is the order I usually do things in. Horizon position, then sky orientation. You know, blending and all that if you need to. If you need mask refinement, do that then. Uh, but I don't need it. I, I did scene relighting, and then I, I just kind of follow the rest of the way down. Reflection amount. I think at 50 it looks pretty good. I often will drag it a little bit to see how that looks. Uh, you know, it looks pretty good at 72. I think I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I think that's probably a little bit much. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to pull that down to about 65. Uh, but I am going to give it a little water blur. I love that. New addition to Luminar in this section here. And I'm going to go, you know, fairly, you know, not high, but like low 30, something about like that. I just want to smooth that out. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go down to sky adjustments. And this defocus will do the same thing for the sky, of course. So I'm going to pop that, you know, high 20s. Just kind of soften that up. I like soft skies and water anyway. You've probably heard me say that before. Um, and if you haven't, I like soft skies and water. And I'll often use negative structure AI and paste it in, but you don't need to do that with sky replacement because it gives you that control automatically. The other cool thing about this recent update is atmospheric haze, warmth, and brightness apply to both the sky and the water. So I'm actually going to cool this off a little bit, just kind of go down, you know, maybe like a negative 50, 52, something like that. And I may adjust the brightness to see how that looks. I'm going a little bit darker there, and I don't think I want to go that dark, maybe just a little bit. But again, maybe a little bit more than that. I don't know. I just experiment until I find something I like. I think that looks pretty good. Now, again, all I've done so far is Accent AI and Sky AI. This is a two-filter overhaul. You have so much power and control. With just this one filter, Sky AI, you can just do so much. But here's where I'll often, if I'm using them in combination, I use this to brighten it at the beginning, 
added the new sky and I brightened it first because it was kind of dark and I wanted to better see the masking lines and the reflection and all that kind of stuff. But now I'll come back and play with this again because I want to take a look at this overall photo as I drag this to the right. How is it being affected? And I think it's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to go at about 75 to be honest. And that's fairly high for me for Accent AI. But if you look at the photo, I mean, we brightened it up quite a bit in the areas where I want more visibility, which is like these rocks in the bottom left, that lake house or boat house, and those canoes over there, and that mountain, right? The sky just looks sweet, I think. Uh, so I'm digging that. The only other thing I might do here is give it a little bit of a vignette. I think I would go kind of gentle, not too much, pretty round, uh, pretty high feathering, maybe a little bit of inner light as well. And that just adds a nice little pop there. That's actually getting a little too bright. So let me tame that a little bit. Uh, and I think I might adjust that amount as well. Um, I like subtle vignettes. It gives it a little bit of a hint of adjustment. There it is without the vignette. And there it is with the vignette. Even without the vignette, I mean, there it is again without. We've got a fine looking photo with two filters. I added the, uh, the wild card, the vignette as a final step just because I kind of like it. Notice because I added the inner light, it did brighten where I darkened the sky. Uh, you know, down here. So you might want to come back here and readjust that brightness if you feel like that inner light has given it too much. So this is the delicate dance of editing where I go from tool to tool and then back to the first tool and then back to the second and first and second. I'm just dancing back and forth between these two. Um, and some of that is because I added a vignette. But without the vignette, I've got a fine looking photo, slightly darker. I like the addition of the vignette. I think it gives it a nice little kick, but really two filter overhaul went from a completely, you know, beautiful location. I like the composition. I like the reflection. I like all the lines. I like how I got the rocks and just kind of lead the eye to the boathouse, but too dark, boring sky. There was literally no sunset. And believe me, I've tried countless ways with split toning and all kinds of ways to get some better color in the photo. And it just wasn't doing it. That's doing it. That's what I like. And I just love doing that and adding that sky and making it look like a beautiful, beautiful scene that it was. It was gorgeous without it, but it's more impactful that way. And that's the fun of Luminar AI, my friends. So much power, so much control, a quick and easy drop in a new sky, fix a reflection. These tools are getting so good and so intelligent. But as I said in that previous video, you still have control. You can adjust where the reflection lies. You can adjust the light values. You can adjust the blur. You can adjust the lighting and saturation intensity in those reflections. So don't let AI scare you. It's your friend. It's here to help. It just makes the hard stuff easier so you can go have control and edit the way you want to edit. That's it for this one, my friends. I'm done. I'm going to get out of here. You guys, uh, thanks for sticking around, coming by, hanging out, all that stuff. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. Staying safe. Taking care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. You take care of yourselves. See you later and adios.